Uh, I have four o'clock, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I know we'll have uh, folks continue to log on, uh, so we'll um, uh, do some introductions, and then hopefully we'll have a good crowd uh, as we get into the meat of our uh, conversation. Um, so again, uh, welcome to everyone uh, to uh, our second version of this uh, Norton Native Intelligence 2.0, give you an update on where the market is. Uh, I wanted to introduce our panel today. Uh, we're very fortunate to have uh, some great folks uh, that have been with Norton for a, a long period of time to, to share their ideas of what's going on in the market and answer some questions. Um, first, I'd like to introduce uh, Amy Sutherland. Amy is a Norton partner. Uh, she's uh, been in the real estate business for over 17 years, and she's been with our firm for uh, about nine years. Uh, she also just the uh, outgoing uh, president of the uh, Hall County Board of Realtors uh, and uh, two-time Realtor of the Year. So we're certainly proud of Amy and all of her accomplishments and everything she's done. Also want to introduce uh, Lori Martin. Uh, she's also a partner. She's in our Georgia 400 office. Um, and she has been in the business for over 30 years, uh, 15 of those uh, with us here at Norton. Uh, and we're certainly happy to have her. She's been very successful on that Georgia 400, Dawson uh, County, Forsyth County market. Uh, so we're glad to have Lori. Uh, Jenna Johnson, who is also uh, on our Georgia 400 corridor. Uh, she has uh, been in the business for uh, over, she's our, our, our matron here of 37 years uh, so uh, you look great for 37 years of uh, being in this business. Uh, you look good for, for 10, <laughs> but uh, we're, we're glad to have you. And she is specializing uh, on the commercial side of things uh, and has a long list of accomplishments uh, as well. And has been with Norton uh, now for 11 years. Uh, so we're glad to have her. We also have uh, Charlie Hawkins. Uh, Charlie, the baby of the bunch, uh, been in the business for six years, all with Norton. Uh, he is uh, located here in our Gainesville office uh, and uh, handles a lot of retail, uh, retail leasing and office space, uh, handles a lot of the downtown uh, Gainesville market. Uh, we're glad to have Charlie here and his expertise. Uh, and then finally, Wade Rhodes. Uh, Wade Rhodes is also a Norton partner, has been in the business for over 19 years uh, and has been uh, with Norton the entire time in our uh, Georgia, or I'm sorry, our Norton Mountain property in Clarksville. Um, so we certainly uh, welcome our panel, uh, and we're glad to have you guys with us today. Uh, and I wanted to go ahead and start uh, with some questions, but I did want to, again, remind uh, those folks that are logging in that if you do have questions, uh, please put those in the chat box. Uh, we will get to those when we can, and we will certainly take questions at the end uh, regarding uh, anything that you hear today. So uh, we'll be glad to answer those. So I'm gonna really start with our first question, uh, which really is gonna go out to the entire panel. Uh, and Lori, I think uh, I'll, I'll start with you. Um, and really it's a simple question. Do, do we think the market is the same, better or worse than this time last year? Um, I'm finding that it's, it's either basically at the same or maybe even a little bit better than it was last year as far as activity goes. Um, I noticed where I was reading some reports the other day that um, you know, Google is showing that people searching homes for sale are up 54% from the earlies of this year lows. And Zillow is even reporting a 51% increase in traffic um, from last year. We're getting calls from potential sellers and buyers asking you know, what's going on with the market, what should we do, what should we anticipate. So we're getting a lot more um, people interested in engaging with us. Um, the other thing I noticed too is that you know showing activity is a leading indicator of, of our housing market, and typically when I look at our MLS indicators, it's showing that for May our showings, both um, in person and virtual, are outpacing uh, what it was last year. So when you look at all of that, I think we're you know we're doing a great job. Now our closings are obviously lower in our market area substantially, but. I think that's just timing that's going to have to come back in, but we're seeing an uptick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great, great to hear that. Uh, Amy, how about you over here in the uh, Gainesville market? What, what are you, do you think uh, same, better, worse? I think it depends on if you're the buyer or the seller. If you're a buyer, it might be a little bit worse because there's some not a lot of inventory out there and you may be looking like crazy and, and you're in those numbers that Lori was talking about, that, that listing, those showings are going around like crazy, but um, 
you know, there's three or four people fighting off of the same house. Um, and, you know, so if you're the seller, it's great. And things are really looking good for you. Calls are up, listings, showings, all of that are up. Um, but it's still, it's still tough. It's, it's as tough as it was last year as far as, you know, actually getting that house because inventory is so low. Yeah, and I believe uh, I looked at the numbers today for the North Georgia markets uh, for all price points were, were, were right around 4.2 month supply, uh, which is obviously a very limited supply when you look at that. And uh, we've actually seen even a high demand on some of the higher end housing, uh, which we will talk about here in a minute as well. Well, let's uh, switch it over to the commercial side. Um, Charlie, how about you? What are you seeing? Uh, better, worse, about the same? Well, instead of using the word worse, I'm going to say it's just more complicated. Um, Thank but you I, for that. Yeah, right. I, I, I feel that the want factor is still strong and is still there in the market. Um, my problem is not stopped ringing, which is good. Uh, being that said, people that saw phone calls have resulted in getting something across the finish line, but people are calling, they're curious, they're active. Um, but through this, I do hear and I sense optimism. I feel and remain optimistic. Um, two points why I feel like it's it's just, it's probably a little worse or more complicated is pre-pandemic. I mean, there were underlying challenges in the economy that we we're working on. Uh, the housing shortage, increased cost of building materials, shortage of skilled labor, probably not the best word to use, but challenges working with municipalities. Um, mixed with extremely high seller confidence, those are characteristics that alone present challenges challenges on, on getting things across the, the finish line. Um, however, what really seems to hold things together through all that was extremely low unemployment rate. And for us in North Georgia, you know, it's a growing district where more jobs are wanted and, and people were trying to hire and in some cases creating hiring wars, which was happening. I believe um, when we are all working and have jobs, we tend to overlook some of those underlying challenges that we were living in. Uh, but then, you know, insert pandemic, businesses are forced to shut down for 60 to 90 days, some forever. Naturally, unemployment begins to go up. Business owners struggle to pay employees, uh, landlords and banks. Employees struggle to pay landlords, banks and bills. Landlords struggle to pay. Uh, the pipeline becomes clogged in the economy which obviously makes it complicated. Um, but I am and do remain optimistic. I was reading yesterday that retail, we experienced about a 15% drop month to month during the pandemic. But you know, in June, the doors began to open and we've already seen a 17% increase. Um, but anyways, I do remain very optimistic. Good. I, I think people are adapting to the changing That's market. Right. Uh, and I think you're right. I think retail, Amazon, obviously those types of things have, have had a big impact uh, mm -hmm. on the retail side and, and in a positive way. So I think it's just a matter of just changing uh, where we are. Uh, Jenna, how about you in the Georgia 400 market? Where are you uh, seeing things uh, as compared to last year? You're, on, you're muted if you'll unmute. Uh, you're still muted. There we it's, go. It's finally happy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I keep punching at it and it doesn't have a touch screen. All right, so I'm mostly involved in single family residential development. So what I'm seeing is that they were selling houses first quarter was a little slower for new home construction than uh, last quarter of 2019. Of course, we don't have the second quarter numbers. So the people who were closing houses in March had those houses under contract when COVID arrived. So there was a little loss in there uh, from the point of view of builders who are trying to get lots on the ground. The developers are trying to get through the city and county to get their final develop their front their land development permit and the city and the community have been closed down so what you've asked are these builders and developers have come in and said you know we need 30 extra days or we need 60 extra days so everybody all of our deals are moving forward they're just moving forward with a harder timeline 
what I am seeing is a lot of people who live in town want a place to go when the next COVID strikes. They want to be able to come up here and have a little bit more room and a little bit of quieter lifestyle. We have not been hit as hard as the big cities. And certainly when we're in places like Pickens um, and on up into uh, Lumpkin, there we're still looking at people looking for, you know, five to 15 acres. And we've seen a lot of activity with that. So I'm very positive. I think everybody wants to build. I think the in town is gonna struggle because we're gonna, the, the unemployment is gonna hit the cities harder. I think that it will hit us up here. Gotcha. All right, Wade. Uh... What, what do you think? What are you seeing up in the mountain region? Well, I would, um, I would use the word, it's a cautious market. Uh, I, I think we're busy, uh, particularly the last three weeks. Uh, April and May were, were extremely slow, but I see a lot of activity in June. Um, I had a major shopping center, you probably you know, it, it fell apart in December. Um, but that thing is back on the, on the, uh, on the plans. And we have a lot of, uh, activity around that development that's, that's, uh, started to work again. Um, but as you, as we, everybody has just said, who knows what's going to happen to retail, but these develop, these, these, these users are fuel. Uh, one of them is grocery. Uh, so th those two users are, I think are going to be, do fine. Um, the thing that this, in our region that we needed to make these developments work were county or city incentives, uh, tax abatements. Um, in, in where I live, that's kind of a, it's a new, it's a new program for our county governments and our city governments. But I think what's happened because of the pandemic, uh, it's kind of opening their eyes that we, we better look at developments that are coming to Habersham County and we better figure out how do we make this happen and what we need, what can we do on the government side to make this, these numbers work for a developer because now they're realizing or they're looking harder at the sales tax revenue that these developments will bring in. So, um, you know, I, I'm I'm optimistic too. I mean, you, you know, I've been preaching for years that Gainesville Hall County was coming up 985, and it certainly is. And um, so, uh, I, I think it will continue to grow. Um, one particular market that I have have been working with is an apartment developer. I sold him a, a small apartment complex back in uh, middle of last year. He's expanded that to 150 units. Now he's looking for more land to build more apartments because because they're as many people as just said, uh, the housing market is tough and the rental market is even tougher. So I think there's good things to come from Habersham. Uh, it's just a cautious market and um, we just got to work through the process. Great. I, I've heard the word, I think, uh, for most of you, the, the caution word, cautious. Uh, and, and I think that's a, a, fair, a fair assessment of where the market is today. But I, what I'm also hearing from you is a lot of positivity uh, and I think the numbers are telling us that, that we're seeing an increase in sales uh, really across all markets. I think April was uh, certainly down a little bit, but from May, uh, we've certainly seen an increase. Um, so I'll uh, go on to our next question. And Amy, I'll, I'll throw this one out to you first. Is, uh, is there a particular product segment um, that we're seeing maybe more or less activity in maybe it's a price point or maybe it's a type of product, um, but are you seeing anything specific? Absolutely. Um, for me, I do a, a group of, you know, rental, I do single family, I'll, I'll do anything that, you know, I feel I'm comfortable with. Um, and I'm seeing a lot of activity in, you know, under 350. Um, a lot at the price point for um, first time home buyers has gone up. So I mean, anything under 350, 400, if it is a good product at a good price, it is gone had one over the weekend listed on Friday. Um, maybe at like three o'clock under contract by Saturday afternoon uh, for full price. And I mean, you just, you, if we saw, I probably had five showings scheduled for the one, the first day it was on the market. It was crazy. 
Um, also, I'm seeing a ton of activity in the rental market. Uh, like Wade just said, just as many people are looking to rent as they are to buy. And it is tough for both different, both segments. We're having multiple um, applications on the same property. So, you know, it's a great time to get into that market as well. What, what I think is interesting is you just mentioned um, what the, the hot price points and, and you, it sounds like you went really all the way to anything under 400,000. I think when we had the maybe conversations last year this time, it was really anything under 250,000. So yes. it sounds like that bar has moved quite a bit um, of what you might consider a, uh, I won't say affordable, but available price point uh, and where, uh, where things are connected. So I think that's interesting. We've seen that escalation. Lori, how about you on uh, your side? Uh, any specific product you're seeing uh, uh, interest in? Yes, I would concur with Amy. Um, for us, in, in our market in particular, those single-family homes, and about 65% of them are priced between 200 and 400,000. So you take a, a county like Forsyth, that basically the average home price is 388, and that's a first-time home buyer, believe it or not. So when you go up that 400 corridor, that is the bulk. Um, the other thing we're seeing are a lot of late properties um, going fast, ones that have been sitting on the market. If you can find them, they're gone. I think a lot of people that didn't get to go on vacations or whatnot said, we'll take that money and we'll just go buy a lake property. They're also looking for mountain property and not even so as a rental or an Airbnb, but just for them to enjoy themselves to be able to get out of the city, to get away from it, have a little expansion. Uh, we're also seeing small acreage tracks between one and three acres. People want out of an HOA. That's the other thing. I think they've been kind of around people and they want a little elbow room. Uh, then when you start educating them about building costs and the process, uh, like Charlie mentioned, it's, it's a little, you know, overwhelming to people if they, you know, they think it just you know, quickly comes up and it's a big process trying to get permitting and things like that. So that's really what we're saying is people trying to, to move up and get out. Yeah. And, and there was just an article in the Wall Street Journal that was actually talking about people having uh, uh, extra income, extra money, the shop buying boats and cars and looking at uh, extra land because they haven't spent as much money on entertainment or vacations uh, or they're uh, not going out to eat as much. And so, uh, and, and retail has actually felt the impact of that because people aren't spending as much money in other areas. Uh, so I thought that was pretty fascinating. And it sounds like that people are looking at on bigger ticket items as well. Uh, instead of going on that family vacation and renting that beach house, let's go ahead and buy that beach house or that mountain house or lake house uh, so we can have a permanent vacation uh, somewhere. So that's, it's, Pretty interesting. Uh, Charlie, how about you? What are, what are you seeing? Any particular product? Man, that, that's a loaded question. I think my answer would change depending on which part of the market specifically you're talking on. I mean, so I, I guess I'll break mine down in six different classifications of the market. Retail, I divide general office for medical office, industrial, land, and investments. I mean, general office is probably moving the slowest and you can make a good argument that all the others are kind of going neck by neck, depending on uh, which part of the market. Land is still difficult. Uh, Y'all did mention, you know, smaller acre tracks, 10, 15, 20 acre tracks. That, that's a hot market right now. But um, for those other sectors, I think it's pretty even depending on which part of North Georgia you're looking at. Okay. Wade, how about you? Any particular product up in the mountain region? I think so. Um... You know, most of my activity has been around the Cornelia market at 365 and 441, which is our economic hub. A um, lot of interest in that commercial development around there that, that fell apart last year. Since this meeting has started, I got two emails from developers asking about land that we have listed right at that intersection. So uh, I had a developer tell me the joke around the capital city golf club locker room with the developers is what's going on in Aversham. They're all talking about Cornelia. So, I mean, it's, so that, that intersection right there is extremely hot. Now it, the tough thing about that intersection is Ethicon owns 142 acres right there and they're not going to sell any land. So it's, we, we're, we don't have a lot of room for development. So it's either going to spread towards Demarest or it's either going to spread towards downtown Cornelia. The other segment that I've seen a lot of interest is in small industrial. Um, our industrial park is uh, 
the um, Fed spent $24 million on our airport over the last three years. Our, our industrial park is now graded, pad ready sites, water retention, uh, sewer water, everything's in place. And I'm seeing a lot of interest in smaller industrial, meaning 5,000 square feet, 10,000 square feet, nothing 80 to 100, but in that smaller square footage. So there's a lot of activity in our industrial park. Great. And uh, Jenna, how about you uh, in that uh, northern Georgia 400 Dawson Lumpkin area? What we're seeing is um, the uh, DR Horton Express product, they had to intentionally slow down sales because they were selling too many. So that is an entry level, well, at this point, 230 is entry level. And that is uh, housing for young families, teachers, police officers, people who need a place to stay and live in the community. We're seeing a lot of folks uh, looking for senior communities. We've got developers working on two senior communities. I just heard uh, in Pickens County on 515, they're gonna do 80 senior apartments. I had a call from a developer out of Tampa wanting 15 acres for commercial on 515. And Pickens especially, they're rewriting the Jasper zoning code. Um, so Pickens may actually start being able to, to build and sell homes. There was no political will for that for a long time. Um, Dawson has, is continuing to do well. We've got a deal coming that should close in September, which would be another 250 homes on the Etowah. And Sydney Mills in North Forsyth got reelected. She won her, her primary and she is the commissioner for the whole of the north side of Forsyth County. And Forsyth has basically nailed the door shut. They do this every 15 years or so and they don't want anybody anymore ever and then they'll have another election and decide, well, maybe yes. Well, I understand Forsyth actually just did approve uh, sewer, I believe up to the Northern part of the county. Uh, and so to have some houses developed up there. So I think things might be loosening a little bit in the Northern part of Forsyth County. The real problem has been, there's been no sewer in East Forsyth or North Forsyth. And so it was waiting for them to have the political will to put the money and when they do the sewer, then the housing will follow. But it's, right. uh, you know, utilities are, are, are critical. They are, you have to have the infrastructure. Uh, and that's one thing I think uh, everybody needs to keep in mind in order to continue the growth. They, we certainly have to have the infrastructure for the municipalities and the communities involved. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna uh, move on quickly to the uh, next question. And this might be just a short answer, but I think we might've touched on it, but I wanted to ask it anyway. Um, you know, is anything changed? We had a conversation about 30, 45 days ago. What, what's changed in the past 30 days? Have we seen anything abrupt? And uh, Charlie, I'll, I'll start with you on this one. Have you, any big changes in the last 30 days? Uh, I just think people are trying to get in paused. You know, businesses are trying to open the doors again and initiating new best practices, whether that be for safety reasons or for policy reasons. Um, for example, I'm hearing many restaurants are reevaluating their menus, cutting down on options on their menus and labor extensive uh, menu items, um, cleaning up procedures and testing them as the doors open again. Yep. Uh, Lori, how about you? Anything I uh, see the last 30 days, significant changes? Uh, I think we've, like we've all said, people have kind of gone from a wait and see to they feel more comfortable and so they're actively participating. I think what we're seeing is some of the people that maybe have lost their jobs due to COVID or whatnot, are now trying to assess maybe they need to take advantage of the seller's market now, get their houses on the market and go ahead and list. And then while interest rates are still real low, be go, go ahead and be able to purchase the new house, whether it be downsizing or lowering value. So those are some of the things we're seeing. Yeah. Amy, how about you? I agree with Lori. I was going to say, you know, the most thing that I've seen change in 30 days is just the activity um, from 30 days ago on, you know, one listing getting shown maybe once a week to at least once a day. Uh, the phone's ringing more, people are, you know, asking more questions because I think to what Charlie said, they're, they're ready to get out. It's gone like Lori and also said from a look and let's wait and find out what's going to happen to I am 
ready to get out and make a move and make a change while we can take advantage of a high sell of point and a low interest rate. You can buy more house um, with a lower interest rate. Yeah. So, so an inc so consumer confidence is what we're thinking is, is, has come back. Uh, I think for maybe, so. Yeah. And obviously knowing a little bit more about the pandemic and, and what we're dealing with and, and, and some people obviously being frustrated as well and just wanting to move forward, I think is part of the, that program too. Uh, Jenna, how about you or anything in the last 30 days? The build, the developers are moving forward. They were on hold and they're now moving forward. I've got builders. Uh, I've got a call tomorrow on a 250 a home deal in Hall with a local, a large local builder. The, the nationals still seem kind of stuck, but the large locals are moving forward. Okay. So, uh, Wade, have, yeah. How about you, Wade? Did uh, last 30 days, anything in your market change? Yeah, and I, and I don't mean to be redundant, but man, in the last 30 days, I've never had so many developers looking at commercial developments in the, that quarter I just mentioned, that Cornelia market right there. I mean, it's just, it's crazy how many people are vying for, there's only about 30 acres of usable land right there, but it's, it's the, the activity and the interest in that is, is amazing over the last 30 days. Right. This may uh, be more of a statement than a question, but I, I'd certainly uh, welcome uh, you guys to chime in. But um, obviously, pre-pandemic, we were facing a, a large uh, housing shortage, shortage of inventory. Uh, I'll call it available housing. Um, that certainly in January and February, uh, we had somewhat of record months. Uh, we saw a lot of activity that we don't typically see that time of year. Uh, and then, of course, the pandemic hit, but um, I don't believe that the, the need for housing has changed. Um, and I was just curious, and I'll go to my residential folks, and Lori, do you still see uh, impact on our market from, from lack of inventory? And do you still see that as a, an opportunity? And our, and our prices being affected, um, you know, are they still continuing to go up because of that? Or are we slightly down? Where do you see things? Our prices, we've noticed, have actually risen between like one and five percent. So I think initially people thought maybe sellers would need to drop their price in order to sell. That has not been the case. We're still looking at, on average, a three-month supply, and we're still just historical lows. Um, for our new construction homes, the builders are building them as fast as they can, and they're selling them as fast as they can. Um, so it's just re really the shortage. When you go on north for size, um, we've got a lot of the big box builders out there, and then even into Dawson County, as Jenna mentioned, we have an express product, the DR Horton, that's opened up on, on the uh, down, down part of the county, but it's just, it's blowing and going still. And people want new construction. When those buyers want it, that's all they want. Um, and so we're also seeing a mixture of uh, builders that can do semi-custom. People are wanting to spend the money to get what they want, as opposed to just buying a house as more of a commodity. They're wanting to really you know build have the pieces they want that that's what we're seeing more of okay uh, amy how about you as far as uh, inventory impact yeah um what Lori said uh, we found that in hall county um as well prices are going up but it's also um i found that you know if you've got a good product the sellers are able to stick close to that list price. I mean, we're looking at it, we're up to about 500,000. You're looking at about 96, 97% of list price to sales price. So, you know, you're sticking firm, whether you negotiate there on your purchase price or you negotiate on closing costs, it's a tight market for the buyers, um, which is good for the sellers. Um, but then on the other turn, I always remind my sellers when they're about to be buyers, well, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You're, you know, you might have, um, you might get all your money, but you're going to pay somebody else all theirs as well. Yeah, I think we uh, are certainly seeing that uh, continued demand uh, for housing. Um, and Jenna, you've already mentioned it, but you were, you, sounds like you've been working with a lot of builders and mm -hmm. Wade, you as well, looking at uh, folks and I you're probably same answers I would think for uh, those markets as well yeah and I pulled metro study for Forsyth Hall Johnson um, and over to Jackson and those really are the northern counties that metro study covers and there were we're down 37.2 percent in vacant developed lots 
over the first quarter of 19. We've gone from 5,500 to 3,500. And I, you know, I can remember when we were in the pits of the depression, you know, we had like 200,000. So everything gets in the um, What's killing people, especially in counties like Forsyth, is that they have got rules that, I mean, it's not gold toilet fixtures, but it might as well be. They, they have so many different construction requirements that you can't do a home that costs less than 350. So if you're dealing with trying to do workforce housing, you're having to go farther and farther out. And then you run into communities like Jefferson, and you say, well, we don't want any more. Thank you, go. Mm -hmm. And so we, we cycle in and out of that. So it, it's, uh, it's the nature of the beast. Everybody wants it till they don't want it, then they want it again, then they don't. And you just have to be able to take advantage of which, which county's going up and which is going down. Yep. Um, it it kind of staying on the same topic, and Amy, I'm going to come back to you on this, is, um, you know, is, is the rental market still strong? We were seeing um, pre-recession uh, or pre-COVID, uh, you know, we were at 98% occupancy, uh, and uh, rents were certainly escalating to an all-time high. Um, are, are we continuing to see that in the rental market, whether it be single-family houses or apartments? Are, are those affected the same way? Absolutely. Um, multiple showings at the same time for rentals. Um, all of my rentals are currently leased. Um, I'm working on upcoming inventory. So I'm able to, you know, I've been able to do um, some 360 tours of homes while they're still occupied with the existing tenant, not scheduled to move out for another month, and I'm pre-leasing it. Um, so you're not even, you're, you're leasing it off of a virtual tour. You're not going in because with COVID, we have to be so very careful to protect ourselves and our clients on the people who live there now and the people who live there in the future. Um, but more people, I think I rented more in March and April and May than I did last March and April and May. And, you know, right now met some uh, potential tenants out right before this call at another um, new development that's coming up and had three different family groups show up one back to back to back just so they could see um, a new product that's out there because there's just nothing. And some people want that single family style living. They don't want apartments um, and you know, they're willing to pay for it. They're willing to wait for it. I've had somebody today tell me they'd pay a hundred dollars extra um, a month if we would consider them first. Uh, so, I mean, there's a lot of activity for rental properties out there. Is there a, and what's the demographic? Are we see are those people that are, um, aren't quite ready to purchase yet? Are those folks who are just long time renters? Uh, new to the community, figuring it out, professional, what what kind of, what are we seeing as far as? Well, I think it's all mixed. The ones I yeah. saw today all appeared to be, you know, maybe fresh out of college, ready to start, you know, not ready to buy yet, don't have a down payment, working on credit or establishing credit. So, you know, you got to start somewhere and, and they, you know, don't want to live at home anymore. And, um, but they, you know, don't also want to live in an apartment. They want to get out of that dorm style and, you know, living and, and move into, you know, feeling a little bit more adult. Yep. Lori, how about you on the uh, Georgia 400 side? Um, I would say that something, um, a lot of my um, investors that do rental properties uh, primarily deal in the single family properties. Um, due to COVID, some of them have had tenants who have lost their jobs and weren't able to make rent. So some of those investors are deciding to take advantage of the seller's market and going ahead and, you know, getting those funds. Um, especially properties that maybe it's time for some major system updates and whatnot. They're going ahead and selling before they need to do that. Um, they're taking those funds in anticipation of potentially uh, upcoming foreclosure market. They want to have some funds in hand. Uh, the other thing is that they're also uh, potentially looking at different types of renters. So we have, especially at the end of 400, we have a new hospital coming in. So some of those investors are moving away from an Alpharetta tech let's say, uh, renter up to the nursing and doctors that are traveling. So they're getting prepared for that. So uh, some of them are really changing kind of their whole um, portfolio in one sense, but the market is still strong for rental properties in that area. Okay, Charlie, how about you? What are you seeing on the 
commercial side as far as uh, whether it's leasing or are you seeing in the, or apartment developers? What are you seeing on that side? Uh, the leasing world just generically in the commercial side. My phone's picked up a lot in the last two weeks. Um, I've got about seven pending leases right now across Northeast Georgia in this last 10 days, I'd say, which is it's good on, on my average historically. Um, apartment guys, I mean, like Jenna was saying, it's hard for these guys to produce a single family home at a decent product and roll it out at 250, 300 and make a dollar. I mean, you could, you can buy a $250,000 home and have a lower mortgage payment than what you are renting a two bedroom, two bath apartment. And those, depending on what market you're in, you're at twelve, fourteen hundred dollars $1,400 a month. So, um, people just got to save a little money, wait for a little more inventory to roll out and maybe they can get in the home and save money. Oddly enough. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, uh, we certainly are still seeing the investment pool and there's still a lot of money sitting on the sidelines. Uh, so it sounds like there's a, a lot of opportunity and we, we know there's always a demand for uh, housing. So whether it's apartments or multifamily uh, and that leasing product. Um, so um, I wanted to get a little bit of advice for the folks listening. Uh, this is kind of one of my favorite questions to ask and uh, you know, Wade, I'll start with you. Um, if, if you had to give an investor uh, any advice today, uh, really, what would you tell them? What would that be? Well, I, I think there's two different kinds of investors. There's a, res, there's a guy who, who understands residential rental, which I'm not, I don't do that, but, I'll, but then there's a commercial guy where industrial. So if you, if you like industrial, I, I think, uh, there's a tremendous need for small industrial, like I mentioned earlier, industrial office warehouse stuff, 5,000, 10, 15, 20, maybe even push it to 40 in our market. Uh, with Kubota expanding, the inland port coming. Um, you know, I've heard rumors that uh, Kubota mentioned that they were encouraging their suppliers to be within 45 minutes of them because they're, the reason they shut down was they couldn't get parts wasn't because of the virus. So he, uh, the, the, the CEO down there is, is pushing his suppliers to get closer to him. Our industrial parks, 15, 20 minutes up the road. Uh, if, you're, if you're a residential guy and, and like residential rental, I think the market is wide open if you, get, if you got the right piece of land or can buy it at the right price and you can get the infrastructure. I mean, look what's happened in commerce. You know, what is it? 2,000 to 4,000 jobs in commerce closed down apartments, townhomes, uh, because they don't have the infrastructure. So where are those people going to live? I mean, I got developers looking in Habersham, but of course they're going to have to be in the city of Cornelia or the city of Baldwin because Habersham County does not have the sewer. And I got two of them looking in Livonia. The city of Livonia is, is, is soliciting those developers because they have sewer. So if, if, that, that's where I would invest in, in residential rental. If that's the case, that's the market that you like or small industrial. I think either one of those are very strong. Yeah. I think the distribute small distribution centers, small distribution warehouses, obviously uh, you have the big guys like Amazon, but, but you got these smaller guys that need to feed some of these other service industries. So I think that's a, a, a good, uh, a good idea. So we, we have a question. Uh, this is for Charlie. Uh, he wanted you to uh, repeat the uh, underlying issues um, for uh, that existed prior to COVID. So my points about pre-pandemic. Um, yeah. Well, characteristics that I identified was housing shortage, which we've kind of been going through, the increased cost of building materials, shortage of skilled labor, um, and then I mentioned Sometimes it can be challenging to work with municipalities um, and then really high seller confidence. That, that does not leave a lot of room for development with those uh, characteristics. Okay. Um, Jenna, I wanted to come back to you. Uh, advice to your clients, investors, where would you tell them to start? Well, I would tell them that poo runs downhill. <laughs> figure out where the sewers going and buy something that will drain into that line. If I had known I was going to spend so much time with sewer, I would have gone to Georgia Tech instead of Georgia State. 
<laughs> pay attention to what's happening. Because that really, without sewer, well, you got the family farm. Yeah. We're, we're talking, I mean, there are private sewer developers. I have one who says he can make the numbers work for a community with 250 homes. But you have to have a buy-in from the, the municipality. And counties are not good at sharing. They want the money. So it, it gets to be really complicated. But that's, you know, we, we do have plans. They do have sewer lines in place. And we do have topo maps showing where, where you would connect. And I think, and it's what Wade says, this is where, this is where the, the, um, the growth is going to come. Wade, you had a comment. You're well. I would just say this: what she just mentioned about government working with these developers. I, I'm seeing these government officials understanding that they have to be a partner with these developers, particularly in tap fees. I mean, it. I mean, I understand they, they, you know, the big investment in in water treatment plants, but you you will get that money back over time. Uh, but you got to, you got to work with these developers on tap fees and infrastructure because um, land cost and development costs are so expensive and building materials everybody here has mentioned. Um, but you have the the government, and I really do believe the pandemic has opened their eyes, Tommy. I really do. I believe they're I believe they're understanding that hey. If we're going to come out of this and we're going to get back to where we were, we better partner up with the developer. Mm -hmm. uh, Charlie, I, I want to get to you on the um, for your where you think people should invest. But there was another question for you. Um, if you say if you would restate the six different sectors, you mentioned retail, industrial, investor. What were the uh, additional three? Well, this probably wouldn't be what you find in a textbook, but this is the way I would break it down: as retail, general office away from medical office industrial land and then investments great thank you for answering that and what uh, so what do you see if you were giving some advice to your investors today uh what, what would that be you know my answer today would not be different from 90 days ago um when i talk to people when someone approaches me about wanting to invest in real estate first thing i ask do you want to invest or do you need to invest meaning do you have a bunch of cash sitting in the bank not making money are you about to sell something? Is it going to be a 1031? Because my answer would be different uh, depending on who that investor is and what their overall motive would be. Um, how much responsibility do you want? Do you want to be a landlord? Some people, that's not for them. Um, because there's, you know, like I said, there's a difference between the two. Value for some can mean security over a return. So really knowing who your client is and what their goal is. Um, I would say if someone was simply just wanting to invest, I would not suggest one sector over the other right now. They all have their strengths and weaknesses depending on which particular market you're in. You know, I, granted, I cover a lot of North Georgia, and so my answer would, would vary a little depending on where we were, but I would remind them to be patient, continue to save cash, so once they do see that opportunity, um, you can be ready. Be mindful of land. Jenna made some good comments about looking at land deals and being specifically mindful. sewer apparently yeah <laughs> be, be mindful of these opportunity zones we have federal and local opportunity zones that make um investments interesting great um how about our residential folks amy what uh what kind of advice would you give folks today yeah, I met with two different investors today, one new looking to get into the market. And my advice was, you know, get yourself organized and ready. Know kind of like Charlie said, what you direction you want to go. Do you want to buy it and fix it and flip it? Do you want to buy it and hold it and rent it? You know, you're looking at different buying strategies when you're going to do that, especially on a residential side. Um, have your finances figured out. Are you doing financing? Do you have a credit line? Are you paying cash? And then I told, the, again, to be patient. I told that the new investor that I was started working with today, um, expect to go into multiple offers. You are in one of the hottest price points out there in probably any market you look at. 
specifically the ones in the Northeast, um, you know, around North of Atlanta, um, expect to go into multiple offers, expect to lose some, but, and then be ready when you find that one and, and go for it, move quick. Speaking of, uh, you mentioned cash. Are you seeing uh, more cash come to the table in closings uh, as far as financing? Are you seeing that increase even with the low, the low interest rates? Personally, I'm not, but I know there's a lot of cash out there. Um, I wouldn't say, you know, one month over the other, I've seen more cash offers than not. I have seen more substantial down payments. Yeah. You know, they've been saving that money and they're ready to put instead of 10%, they're putting 20 you know, I think there's a lot of people with the low interest rate, they're very mindful of, you know, mortgage insurance or maybe buying a point or two down so they can take advantage of the current low interest rate with an even lower interest rate for the next however long, 30 years or however long they're going to stay in the house. Great. Uh, Lori, how about you? Cl investments, clients, what would your advice be? Uh, I'm pretty much exactly as Amy said. I mean, that's what we've been dealing with and seeing here. Um, it's interesting because um, with some of these buyers that, uh, especially as the pandemic first came about, and then, you know, when they started, um, especially if they had any low credit scores, there was a little bit of a time there where lenders will start to charge much higher rates, adding one to two points. Um, and now some of even those backing investors for the financing have realized, we've met, why don't we go ahead and drop our rates a little bit, don't charge as much as points because otherwise we're going to get these buyers to get a mortgage with us and then they're just going to refinance um, in the next six months to a year. So it's interesting seeing that. Um, again, really, I think they're keeping cash. Uh, I think back to when we had the crash and, you know, when we started in 06 or 07, 08, and you had all those different people buying and they were putting down 20%. We do feel that higher uh, down payments, but not much. Especially for the investors that I have that have been in it a long time, they're like, you know, it's great the values are going up, but I don't want to be on the wrong side of that should these higher values drop in any way. So um, that's what we're seeing on them. Okay, great. Um, I, I want to give some time for some questions, and I saw that there was a question about uh, uh, the consumer confidence that I mentioned, um, and they're curious about where you can get that information. Uh, I pull from the National Association of Realtors. Uh, they do studies every year uh, and you can go to their website and they actually have a, a, a great uh, presentation uh, on uh, the real estate market. Of course, that was uh, pre-COVID. Uh, I haven't seen any of the consumer confidence post-COVID, uh, but, but speaking of what I've seen as far as the confidence is just what we're seeing on the ground on a daily basis. I think our discussion today has address that we are still seeing a lot of activity in the real estate market. Uh, and so that, that consumer confidence has, has obviously been high as far as real estate is concerned. Um, still a great investment. Um, you know, they always say I can make more money, but I can't make more land. Uh, so, you know, it's a natural resource. Uh, and I think that's uh, why we always see it as a great investment. So um, I know we're getting close to the uh, end of time. We've been on for about 45, 50 minutes. I wanted to give uh, folks opportunity to ask questions. So if anybody wants to put questions in the uh, Q&A box, please feel free to do so. Um, and we'll wait up for a few minutes. I uh, see uh, if they'll put the Q&A, uh, we will um, be happy to answer any questions. But uh, as we do that, I did want to, again, just thank our panel. Uh, you guys uh, certainly have done a great job today. Uh, we've covered a lot, of, a lot of topics, a lot of area. Uh, it's been, uh, I know a lot of people are curious about what's going on uh, in North Georgia, especially as it uh, relates to, to real estate. And uh, I think we've given them a good picture. Uh, and, and, you know, we hope to do this again in 30 to 45 days and, and see if the answers have changed. Uh, it's one of the reasons I asked the question. And what's interesting is we all had uh, an answer for the, the change in 30 days. So it's a, it's mm. a, ever evolving market. Uh, it's a day to day market. Um, and I will throw out one more question. I don't see anything from, uh, from our uh, panel, but the, um, uh, obviously the, uh, we're seeing this, but the stock market's been obviously very volatile. It's been up and down. Um, have, have, have y'all seen, it doesn't seem to be impacting uh, the investment side of things, maybe more on the, the end user business side. How about, what are you guys seeing? Charlie, I'll, I'll 
throw that out to you. Yeah. So as far as these, these new investments um, or good return investments really haven't hit the market yet. That might change in 60 to 90 days and some shakes out some, but uh, cap rates are still low. Um, six, you could find stuff in the sevens, low sevens, but um, generally speaking, the mom and pops that we most often service here in Northeast Georgia, those investors, they, they're looking for eight and a half, 10, you know, their buddy down the road got a 12% 30 years ago. So they're holding out. Um, cap rates are not at that point. We're still at the six and low sevens. Great. Wade, how about you? Any thoughts on that? I'm strictly a real estate guy, man. I'm not much <laughs> in the stock market. Yeah. I, hey, there's two people in the real estate business, Tommy, the quick and the dead. Yeah. <laughs> Un understood. Uh, looks like we have a, a question for Jenna. Um, besides reduction in uh, tap fees, what would the next incentive uh, that would help builders and most benefit from the counties and cities? What would be most beneficial from that other than the tap fees? Well, I think having the counties and the cities co commit to um, really wanting housing to be affordable. They, it's, it's gotten to the point where they, people only want wealthy people living next to them. If they don't want to, they don't want to share with uh, doctors and, I mean, they want doctors and lawyers and Indian chiefs and they don't want worker bees. And I have had a discussion with a politician who said, well, I just want million dollar homes on anchor lots. And I said, well, that's fine. And you are going to get to put the groceries on the shelves in Kroger, in addition to check yourself out. And we, I think, uh, and I think one of the things the builders are having to deal with is the fact the counties lay on layer and layer and layer of requirements, things like having to have um, certain types of, of exterior construction, certain types of interior construction. Certainly Frank Norton has talked about this for years, that things just got really crazy with having to have a outlet every eight feet, you know, it's just crazy stuff. So I think that would help to have the politicians be a little bit more realistic about what their goals are. Um, as far as having a full-blown community. Yeah, and I think, and obviously fees are something we talk about too is, is a challenge and, and how can we reduce fees? Uh, we had another question come in and I think, uh, Wade, this might be in your, in your neck of the woods, but um, it says, uh, are, is anybody working in Raven Towns Union areas in residential space? Uh, how is that area changing? Uh, certainly not any thing as far as affordable housing in Raven. I do believe you're seeing a tremendous amount of second home interest because people want to move out of the metro. They definitely want a place to go. A lot of people looking for five acres, 10 acres. A lot of people think they want 20 acres until they start walking 20 acres of a mountain. <laughs> you know, they, just don't, they don't realize what they're getting into, but they want space and, and there is a tremendous a group of people looking for smaller tracks to move into Raven, Union, Towns, and Haversham. Um, but back to the old sewer question, uh, you know, in Raven, the only sewer is right there in um, Clayton. So there's some, there is some uh, 55 and older development downtown, but uh, not out in the, in the, in the county itself. And of course, the problem with Raven only 20% of the land is, is privately held, 80% of it's government land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems that we're gonna continue to see this uh, folks uh, retreating to uh, larger tracks, space, uh, wooded areas. Uh, I think that's a, a common theme, sort of the ex-urban retreat uh, to get into to more rural areas. We saw a little bit of that trend after 9-11 uh, which was pretty interesting. And I think we're seeing a little bit of that now, uh, certain with COVID. And, and I think some people looking at that as a second home retreat as well. Well, guys, uh, we're uh, getting to the top of the hour, about five minutes. I think we've uh, answered all the questions. And I, again, I wanted to thank all of you, uh, Charlie, Laura, Amy, uh, to Jen, Jenna and Wade. Y'all have done a great job and uh, appreciate all that you do for us. And by the way, if any of you want to get in touch with these guys, if you want to go to our websites, uh, uh, gonorton.com or nortoncommercial.com, 
uh, all of their information and contact information is there. Uh, and we will, we can get that to you so you can get in touch with these fine folks. Uh, and we'll also be sending out this recording uh, via our Market Watch newsletter. Uh, so if you have folks that weren't able to make it and you would like to send it out to them, uh, we will have this recording uh, sent out as well. So again, thank you panel. And uh, for all of the, those that uh, have uh, logged in, uh, we certainly appreciate you as well. And uh, we hope to see you guys in the next few weeks. <laughs>